at the very least, it'll give you guys a better view of what So, I'm going to need uh, all the space I can get here, basically. And the we're going to put the hardware that we've got in the middle here. If you remember, the stuff I have over here is still from the yellow bag, which we haven't touched a whole lot till now. And this is from the green bit. But actually at this step, we're going to grab another couple things and they will be coming from the yellow bag. We're going to be using some more of the T-nuts. We're going to be using this bracket that you find, um, which feels really lightweight, but it's actually steel. <laughs> um, there is also going to be these short M5 bolts, they're 10 millimeters long, that you'll find in here that we're going to use as well. And then later in this step, we're going to use the normal length M5 bolts. So basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be introducing this X-Rail, which is, you know, the star of the show, I like to say. And from this point, you're going to be able to decide, do you want your control box slash electronic steering machine on the right side, or sorry, for you, on the right side, or on the left side? Um, because we actually designed this machine to be perfectly symmetric. And so, I'm going to design it so that, or I'm going to assemble it so that it goes on the right side, because, am I getting this right? Sorry, on the left side, because we tend to put that as our default location for our electronics. And usually since people are more right-hand dominant, it's nicer to have the machine on the left, and, or sorry, the, the computer that you're using to control the machine slash the keyboard and all that stuff on the left side and then your machine on your right side. So that's why we put the electronics on the left side. Um, so in that case, this mount here goes on the left side. Now, if you want to put it on the other side, that's fine. You just take the mount and you flip it over and you put it on the other side, as well as a lot of these other steps that we're going to do that um, are more biased towards one side. It'll be pretty obvious because I'll just be doing it on one side and not doing it on the other side then that step you'll also want to flip around if you are wanting to be consistent in putting your electronics on the right side of the machine instead of the left. So, that being said, let's begin. I'm going to grab my two short M5 bolts that we use for this step and the T-nuts. Two of those as well. And exactly as is pictured in the manual, we're going to be putting them inside the mount. The bolts coming in from the top. And the T-nuts from the underside. And you'll just rotate this on, you know, once or twice because you need to leave a gap on the T-nuts. And make sure the T-nuts are facing the right way, as is shown in the close-up of the diagram. And then you just slide this on. And uh, the way that it'll slide on is you'll have to have the T-nut oriented properly so that it slides into the rail. Um, this is very similar to the way that the, the middle feet slid onto the Y rail because this is actually the same profile that we're using. Now, if you're finding it doesn't slide on too easy, that's probably because you twisted the T-nut on a little bit too much. I twisted mine on a little too much well as well. So just loosen it off a little bit. There we go. 
And as the second diagram shows, you basically will want this bracket to be hanging off the edge a little bit. You can see with the green dotted lines there. So we're going to hang it off the edge a little bit. And the, the placement doesn't have to be very exact. This is, this is, uh, this bracket's going to be used for drag chain. And then we're just going to twist these bolts down and fully tighten them down now to hold this all in place. By the way, um, I don't encourage you doing assembly this way in particular um, with the X rail on top of the Y rails because the edges that the wheels ride on can get dented if you're pushing down too hard or, you know, not being too careful. I'm mostly doing it so I can make sure you guys can see everything that I'm doing. Um, but I'm also being mindful of not damaging the rails on each other. So I would recommend that you just set the components aside to make the space so you can do this properly. Okay. So this is going to become quite fun for me um, and for you, but basically what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to make enough space that I can lift the rail up onto the right side Y rail. I think we can do it. Yep. yep there we go. And we're going to use the four M525 bolts from the same bag again. Oh, I grab five. And then we're basically just going to lift the rail up here with one hand. And you're going to notice that it matches the back profile of the plate, the Y gantry plate. Um, and when you see how it's matched up, then you can see as well how the bolts can come in from the outside and thread into the rail on the inside. Now, because I'm holding the rail at an angle, but right now the, or the, the X rail is at an angle, but the, the Y rail is straight, they're not going to be able to line up very well. So what I tend to do is start with one of the top bolts, either the, the top back, uh, back one or the top front one. So in this case, I'm going to use the top front one. And I'm actually going to angle this assembly towards the rail so that their um, angles sort of match up. And this is only really tricky at the start. Similar to when we put the router mount on, you kind of have to get that first bolt in, which is the trickier part. But then once you have that first bolt in, installing the remaining ones becomes a lot easier. And um, this step is also very similar in nature to when we put the feet on the y-axis rails where you're just going to be watching out to make sure it's not too tricky to put the bolt on because if it's really tricky you're probably doing something a little bit wrong and also you're not going to tighten the bolts down until you've kind of got every single one of them roughly positioned and semi-tight and then you'll go around and do a final round of tightening. So you can see this is much easier now that the first two bolts are mostly in. And if you're having trouble seeing what's going on, feel free to use the alternate view, which show how the bolts come in from the other side. These four bolts we're using, we're going to use another four bolts on the other side after this and attach the other Y axis onto the other side of the X axis rail.
Okay, I'm getting them all close to tight now. Now, if you're someone who wants to really tune in your machine, you can, at a later date, come back to the four bolts on each side. And because there's looseness between uh, the, the, the bolt holes have a bit of looseness to them uh, between the plate and the rail, it gives you the ability to loosen these bolts off and, and twist the rail this way, back and forth. Um, and that can help with tramming. Tramming for a lot of people, though, will be necessary um, unless you are doing a lot of surfacing or you're doing very accurate work. Because the way that the machine goes together standard is always going to get you pretty close. I'll also mention that the, you can do the same with the router mount. It's got um, some looseness built into it so that if you do need to make small adjustments here and there, it's always available to you. Great. So, before we put this on the other side, we're going to have to put this guy on. This guy that's been sitting around this whole time. You might have forgotten about him, but he's still here. So I'm just going to give enough space here. And once again, we've got a profile, a side profile that we show here. So you can see how this is going to roll on. It's very similar to the y-axis where you're matching the edges of the wheels up to the edges of the rails. And if all goes well, you should notice that this slides on pretty smoothly. As I said, this is going to be a bit more awkward for me, but for you guys, it'll be a bit more straight on. Like that. And now that that's rolled on there, we're going to make this final connection on this side. Now, even though this is all quite heavy and this guy wants to roll off, what we've actually got going on on the other side here is this bracket is going to help keep the entire assembly lifted up to the right height so that you don't even have to hold this in place. It just holds itself. So all I'm doing is I'm just getting the two Y axes generally square so that it looks like the rail is relatively flat against the plate here. That looks pretty good. And now it's just going to stick around there while I put these other four bolts. So. Oop. Now you might have to pick this up and, and wiggle it around a little bit to get the bolts engaged in the right position. But other than starting them off in the right position, you shouldn't have to worry about it anymore after that. I'm so envious that you guys are doing this facing towards you. <laughs> Makes my job a little harder, but you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. Spoiler alert, this assembly portion uh, or this assembly video is not just going to take you to the finishing machine, but we're actually going to go to the project so that you can, I guess, uh, finish off the assembly with a bag. And, you know, it's pretty cool to have something at the end to show that the machine is working properly. And you can also show it to your friends and family or 
your wife or husband or anything like that and say, hey, I'm already using the machine. Isn't that crazy? It's not just together in a couple hours, but I've already made something like that. That's how cool this machine is. And then they'll say, wow, we should spend our entire retirement savings on buying way more of these machines. It's so cool. I'm, I'm just kidding. Be, be financially responsible. <laughs> um, actually, that reminds me. Um, some people wonder why we don't offer um, payment plans for the long haul. Because sometimes you'll see that on other websites for hobby CNCs or for other equipment like this. Um, me and Andy just really believe that this is, I mean, th like you can do a lot with this machine and you could start a business with it and you can, I mean, there are a lot of possibilities. But at the same time, because it has a lot of possibilities, we really feel like the people that are buying it should be buying it for a reason, if you know what I mean. Um, and that reason should be strong enough that they can buy it outright, basically. Um, we've, oh, we've talked about this many times, and, and um, to be honest, we just feel like we would be we would feel bad if we offered a payment plan for the long mill because I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where like car dealerships, right? When you walk into the car dealership, instead of saying, Oh, this car costs $60,000, they just say, Oh, well, it's only, you know, a hundred dollars a month for the rest of your life. But they, they kind of like leave out the rest of your life part. You kind of feel like you're getting a great deal. You're like a hundred dollars. That's so cheap. I might as well just get two or something like that. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, it's a bit different for a car because, you know, cars are way, way more expensive than a CNC is and arguably um, much more useful for everyday life. But the I, my point still stands. Uh, we don't want to really encourage people to be making purchases that they can't financially support, right? And so in a roundabout way by not offering payment plans, it, it means that you need to know that you're in the right spot to buy this machine as is. So, which I hope you've done. You, you're watching the assembly video. So it means you've already bought the machine. So um, yeah, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope if you've picked this machine up, I hope that you um, have great plans for it. Either you had disposable income and you think it's going to be an awesome time using it, which I completely agree. It is going to be an awesome time using it. Um, or you have some business idea for it and you're going to make lots of money. And if you're going to make lots of money, then uh, this is a pretty low cost investment, to be honest. A machine that can make almost anything you can think of. <laughs> so, uh, once again, following the instructions, I'm bringing this in from this side.